Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. I'm going to start the video with a shout out to my buddy Denny Skurb up there in Philadelphia, a Philadelphia Eagle fan and a happy guy today because Eagles beat the Giants yesterday. And normally I'd be wearing a Giants shirt today, but if you notice anything unique about the Philadelphia Eagle uh, shirt that I'm wearing, put it in the comment line below. I want to see how observant you guys are. You know if you've been watching 125 of my other videos I've posted that occasionally I like some shock factor in my videos and today at least on the whiteboard part of it we're going to start with a little shock factor. I'm going to go out to the mill momentarily, a couple minutes, and make this part. Now here comes the shock factor. This is not the outside of the part, this is the inside of the part. Here's the outside of the part. Outside of the part is the easiest part of this part. There you go. Close enough, right? I think you got the idea. The first inclination I know when I was starting out in machining, I would see something like this and I would say, can't do it, it's just not going to happen. You need some radiuses in these corners in order to be able to mill that out or do it on a mill. Second thought would be, wire EDM or broach it out. Now broaching on a mill is something that's entirely possible. Just line everything up, drop it into a lower gear so nothing shifts around, have the broach that you need, and attack it. Mill out the majority of this part first is what we're going to do. And then I'm going to go in there with a high speed steel square brooch in the mill and I'm going to shave it off. I'm going to put these break edges on these corners by manually rotating the brooch 45 degrees and attacking it that way. So we're going to start with an X in the mill from an end mill of course. And then I'm going to put the brooch in and we're going to shave it in there. If you have seen me brooch before, Chances are it was in a series of videos that are no longer on my channel. They're still on Google Plus for those of you that know where I'm going with this. And if you want to go and check them out, go check out Google Plus and look up my name. And there's a whole series of videos on there as well. So we're going to broach today. We're going to broach on a mill. It is not something that you see a lot of uh, unless you're using like a keyway broach or something. And that last video I did on serrated milling. It's a great way to make a keyway brooch for yourself if you need to and you don't have one laying around. Quick thought on brooches. If you're making a square brooch for yourself, I should never close these, they're way too tight to open. Front of the brooch is square. Tip to tip. That would be the size of your starting diameter blank, no problem. And you do not, if you can help it, you'd rather not have the brooch square as it's uh, linear with the spindle of your machine. Put a little bit of draft on it so the sides don't drag on the way down. Let's take a walk out to my bench. I'll show you half a dozen brooches that I've made over the years. A couple that are ground from high speed steel, a couple that are done from a different type of steel depending on what you're broaching. So just keep in mind, softer materials will always yield to harder materials. So if you're broaching aluminum, which is what I'm going to do today, I'm going to use a stainless steel brooch or a high-speed steel brooch to do it. You know, the softer material will always yield to the harder material. It doesn't necessarily have to be glass hard. It just has to be harder. Let's take a walk out and show you what we got. All right, let's take a look at some of these brooches. This is a standard piece of high-speed steel. This is a... Uh, reamer blank or a drill blank glass heart I would say it's probably about 67 Rockwell and you can see the center swirl pattern in that would indicate that this is, has a cup geometry to it and it's hollow ground now when you do that the radius you know the radial geometry of the front and the square geometry of the side will lead to a little bit of an inward pucker on your flat faces and if you're doing a long surface brooch you're definitely going to see that in the finish. So like I said before, be careful about hollow grinding, anything like that. That's just a straight up high speed steel. You can see the mild relief to it, back relief. Bigger here than it is here, so that's a good thing. You don't want to drag it on the sides. Sharp corners, nothing special. 
Same kind of brooch. This is a 17-4 stainless brooch. And how do I know this? I know this because of the color right there. You can see it, the browns and the blues. This heat treats up at 900 to 1,000 RPM. 900 to 1,000 degrees, depending on the heat treat you're looking for. But the H900 is a 900 degrees. And this is an easy one to make, actually. Take a cowl block or take an indexer. Turn yourself up a blank with a large relief. Let a big head on it. Put it in your vise. Cock it. Mill it. Mill it. Mill it. And I'm not just holding this up by accident. When you lift the back of a collet block, you introduce the front rake angle that you want. I don't make it too aggressive because then this edge right here will be very uh, brittle and subject to failing real quick. Just make sure whatever footprint you have on the front will take you all the way past whatever relief you put on there. So the size is entirely up to you. I think this is the one I'm going to probably set up and use today. High speed steel, I've used this as a live center in a chuck or in a collet in a lathe in a pinch. And I figured, you know what, I got a nice piece of high speed steel. I'm going to make a corner brooch out of it. So this is a brooch that I would use for popping corners in a piece of steel. High speed steel, square grind on the bottom. And you can see the relief is minimal for strength and deflection. And it also gives me some room to grind back if I need to resharpen it. This guy here is a very sharp little tool, and this is for much sharper internal corners. I believe this one was a 30 degree, possibly 40 degree. And it was for a flat bottom. So this was going to a surface this was not going through. And that's a little bit harder to do because as the chips displace on a surface to surface brooch, square corner, they'll jam up down here in the corner and get under your brooch. So for every couple of hits here, you have to come across with something and knock the corner out here. That might be a topic for a whole nother video. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, say it and I'll film it. Now this is the one that's got some miles on it and has been previously online if you've seen this one or you recognize this one. This was a fun project. I probably should have pulled the rubber band off off camera so sorry about that guy. There you go. Also 17.4 but it hasn't been cleaned up. The blue is the heat treat that it comes out of the oven with and if you're heat treating stainless and for those of you out there that don't think you can blue stainless well here you go uh, if you have a light machine oil on stainless when you heat treat it you're going to get this blue any type of oil that you have on it is going to come out blue if it's clean i mean really clean like sprayed off with alcohol clean it's going to turn this little golden temperature and you won't have too much blue to it so lighter the oil, the lighter the blue, the heavier the oil, the darker the blue. 17-4 stainless, H900, one hour at 900 degrees. This is the brooch I used for uh, one of the other series I posted. This was very specific, had to go very deep. And there were other features on it. So you can use this side, then that side, this way, rotate it, clock it, whatever you need to do to get the job done. There you go. Let's take a walk over to the mill, pop a hole in a piece of aluminum, and make something uh, unique. If you are going to broach with a mill, and by broach I mean use this not as a drill but as a stationary tool and just continue to shave up and down, a couple of good ways to prep this mill would be to make sure that you're in back gear or low gear, low range, whatever kind of mill you have. This is not a side clutch jobber up here this is a high low on the side put it in the lowest gear possible and then crank it to the lowest rpm possible and that's going to give you the most resistance in rotation with your tool let me bring this down just a hair now one of the things i always planned on making and i will eventually make someday is a pair of collars one to go around the spindle and one to go around the quill because the relationship between these two is always pretty tight and if you were to clamp this one to this one this cutter is just going to remain intact forever 
uh, rotationally that is. You snap it off, that's on you. Let's draw a little bit of artwork on this piece. Cut it out with this 3 8 2 flute carbide end mill. And then we'll make it look like the piece on the board. Bear with me, I'll come back and show you what I drew. Alright, this is today's chore. We're going to cut this out like a regular standard cross. Sharp corners on all eight tips. Large 45 degree chamfers on the inner four corners. I'm going to do this with a 3 8 2 flute carbide end mill and hopefully we can get it done relatively quick. I will accelerate this as not to bore you and then when I put the brooch in we'll slow it down and talk about it for a second and then get back to it. Okay, enjoy. Now let's just say for sake of argument that you did that to your required dimensions. What you have now is four internal corners that need to behave 45 degrees on them, features, and eight external corners. Easily achieved with a square brooch with one index of the brooch and then you can do all four corners with the same setup. I'm going to put the brooch in and I'm going to line the brooch up by eye. I'm not going to take time to indicate it but I will show you uh, what I would suggest if you were to do so. Okay. Be right back. Okay, guys, I know I said I wasn't going to show you the indication of this particular part, but this is how I would do it. This is how I just did it. If there is any slop in your machine, make sure whatever error you have rotationally is uh, common at both ends. So if the brooch does walk a little bit, uh, you're expecting the results that you see on your indicator. Run the indicator back and forth across the part. Sweep it, make sure it's zero, which it is. Choke it up nice and tight in the collet. Machine in back gear, low gear, RPMs turned all the way down. And we're just going to go at this right to the lines. We're going to knock all them corners out. Let me get this back on a tripod and make it happen. We're going to start with these internal corners in the back so you get a pretty good view of what's going on. I'm going to start with this back face right here and work my way towards this corner in the back. So I'll start with the brooch against this face and work my way out to this face. And then I'll come across and I'll do the same thing here to there. With a flat bottom brooch, try to take little nibbles and you should be fine. If you take too much of a bite, it's going to be like trying to drag a truck across a mud uh, field with a string. It's just not going to end well, so let's not do that. Current configuration on that is all square corners. We are going to rotate the brooch 45 degrees and we're going to knock the corners off that are highlighted in black on the part. Then I'll take it out so you can get a better look at it.
I've repositioned the brooch over the edge of the part right now, and I am just visually aligning two opposing corners over the leading edge of that part for my 45 degree reference. Let's get down there and knock them corners off. All right, let's take it out, clean it up, put it on the bench, profile it, show you what we got. This is the end result of what you just witnessed. If you're curious as to exactly how much time that was, that was about 15 minutes total. Eight internal square corners four external chamfered corners, three-eighths aluminum. This is the guy that did it, 17-4 stainless high-speed, or excuse me, 17-4 stainless heat-treated steel. And I think it came out pretty nice. Next time you look at a print with an internal square corner, don't be so quick to think that it can't be done because it can be. It's just a little more expensive and a little more prep involved. But if you do it right, it looks like an extrusion or a wired part. Thanks for watching. Well, I think that piece worked out pretty good. You know, anytime you can look at a machine differently than just put a cutter in here and cut that and drill this, and you know, anytime you can expand your capabilities with a machine, certainly makes you a better machinist or a well-rounded facility. Been doing that for a long time. It works on a variety of different materials. Just uh, make sure that whatever brooch you're using is harder than the piece that you're working on. And when it gets into harder steels, naturally use uh, much harder and eye protection always because there's a lot of pressure there. You don't want to see anything shatter and potentially hurt you. Hope you like what you saw. Real time on that part was about 12 minutes. I blasted it after the fact with a a glass bead media, about 60 psi. If you're wondering how that finish was accomplished. That took about two minutes, so I do like the way that looks. And if you fly cut over top of that, you can get a really nice satin, shiny contrast, which is really pretty for cosmetic work. Anyway, thank you for watching. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Danny, thanks for the shirt. I'm out.